So again, my name is Jen McNeely. I'm the Assistant Director for the Masters of International Business Program. I've been fortunate enough to, to work with the program for several years in different capacities. Um, what I always say about the MIB program at Smith, it is a program where you get to choose your own adventure. And we'll go through some slides in regards to why I say that it's choose your own adventure. It's definitely a program that is suitable for all kinds of different people um, who have different goals in mind. And again, I'm here with my colleague, Carrie Frazier, who is our application advisor. She puts on a personal touch when it comes to helping you get through the admission process um, with all the different documentation and steps that you have to go through to, to get into the, the program. And again, I will be introducing and passing the presentation over to Carrie uh, in a few slides. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the MIB program, who we're looking for for admissions, why would students want to pursue a Master's of International Business program. We'll go through some of the structures because there are different ways to complete the program. There's a single degree, there's double degrees, there's an exchange component. So there's a lot of nuances to the program itself. So we will go through just the structure of the program. We'll talk a little bit about careers. As I always say to students when I'm talking to them about the program, to be successful is to be academic, academically successful. So passing all of your requirements, but then also getting a career at the end of it or changing your career paths um, once you're done the degree program. And then I will be passing uh, the slides off to Carrie, who will talk to you about what the admission requirements are to get into the MIB program. And then we'll open it up to you. We want to hear from you, see if you have any questions that we can answer. Um, so that will be coming up. So some people often wonder why the MIB program, who are we looking for? So we're always looking for those global leaders, those global individuals that are wanting to have more diverse experiences. And the reason why we developed the MIB program is to allow students to learn about the different nuances of what it's like to do business, not only in Canada, but internationally. And so we have so many success stories in regards to individuals that, you know, were part of the Canadian culture, but now are living and working abroad um, in Europe, down in South America, and vice versa. We've had individuals that have come into the program gaining all kinds of diverse experiences within the classroom experience, within the exchange component, and now living in Canada. So when you think about the Masters of International Business program, the individuals that we're looking for are those global leaders that are wanting to gain more experience um, working in a diverse setting. Some key aspects of the MIB program, like why would somebody want to, to take the Masters of International Business program, it's to allow you to, you know, have those experimental learning opportunities within the classroom, um, because, you know, in a class of 100 students, it's not unusual for those individuals to be representing 25, 27 different nationalities. Um, it's also allowing students to have some team based learning. So we as administration, we place you into core teams. So you're completing all of your core requirements as a team. So as you're going through the program, you're actually developing team skills, which is um, essential for when you get out into the work world and into your careers. It's another way for you to stand out in the crowd. Like I always tell students when they're looking at a graduate program, when you graduate out of your undergrad, you're graduating maybe with 300 students who have a commerce or a business background. But how do you stand out from those individuals? Well, by taking the Masters of International Business program, that can allow you to stand out from the individuals that you just graduated with. So you're you're developing more skills. Most of the students in our classes already have a business undergrad. It is so it is one of the requirements for admissions. But by taking the Masters of International Business program, it's actually allowing you to dive deeper into business aspects and just different key aspects of international business. Um, so we take 
the learning that you've had in your undergrad program, and we just make it that more much more specialized in international business. And so some students will ask us why the study abroad piece, why the exchange component? And we just think it's essential for individuals that are wanting to have that international component to be able to go and study abroad. So no matter if you're doing the single degree or the double degree component, every student needs to have an international component to their degree requirements. And we'll talk about when does that exchange um, happen. What we find is when we send students out on exchanges, either in the single degree or for the double degree, so you're on a partner university for a full year, what students are doing is they're, they're developing their knowledge of themselves. So they leave Smith as an individual, but then they're gaining all of this international experience, working with other students from around the world. And what they're starting to do is see their self-awareness their, and they're so, starting to see their self-reliance because they're sometimes they're traveling on their own and so it's getting to know themselves just that much more. It also helps students develop their leadership skills and so what we find is when individuals get out into the work world that leadership component really helps them and it defines who they are and also allows them to uh, stand out in the crowd. Cultural intelligence. It's not unusual for individuals to start their careers and be in a team environment within their work environment and working with different individuals from around the world. And so what we find is we do workshops on cultural intelligence within our programming, but then also allowing students to go out internationally and traveling abroad. They also develop their own cultural intelligence and it just helps them that much further with their careers and in their personal lives. Um, and then it's also managing ambiguity. And so what does that mean? It's like thriving when you're under challenges. And what we find is as students are um, challenging themselves, they are just developing more on a personal and a professional level. So the Masters of International Business program, what you can expect in the classroom is not a lot of lecturing. Um, what our professors do is they do a lot of case-based learning. As I indicated on the slide previous, we also do a lot of team work. So as you're going through the core courses, you're developing um, your your team skills also during your electives you have you get to work with other individuals so again working in a completely different team uh, there is a lot of self-directed learning what that means is our professors expect students to be prepping before classes start. So reading all the cases, looking at um, the lecture slides before they get into the classroom so that there can be conversations that happen within the classroom environment. I always tell visitors when they come to the school that when you walk into the Masters of International Business Program classroom, it's almost like walking into like a little United Nations because you can, if you can imagine a classroom of 60 students, 25 different citizenships being represented, and the conversations that the professors allow happening is just so diverse. So you can have individuals who have, you know, they're talking about what it's like to do business in Canada, but then you have another individual that might be from China, and they're talking about what it's like to do business in China. And so the conversations within the actual classroom environment are, are unbelievable. And they're just completely different than what students have seen sometimes within their undergrad experiences. And so professors will also do simulations. So it gives opportunities to learn as they're going through the actual classroom experience itself. And so it's not a lot of the professors just talking to the students. They want to hear from you. They want to have those conversations and they want their your classmates to learn from one another. And again, so I said that I was going to talk about the MIB structure. So the beauty about the MIB program is the fact that you do get to choose your own adventure. So 
And the reason I say that is you can come in and do the single degree program. So that would be following phase one, phase two, and phase three on this slide. And what that means is in the fall semester, you're with us for all of your core courses, a couple of your electives. And then in the phase two, that's your winter semester where you actually go to a partner university. Um, at this point of time, the MIB program has over 60 partner universities that students can select from. So you can be in Canada for the fall semester, then you could go to Singapore maybe for the winter semester, or you could go to the UK for the winter semester and do your electives. And then the third phase is when you're actually doing the what we call the 901 consulting project. So as a core team, you're actually working with a company, you're developing a project for them as you're going through the program. And so typically students will um, give a company about 500 hours of consulting work as they're going through the program. So as you're gaining your academic um, degree, you're also gaining some experience in the professional world because you are doing some consulting for an actual company. And the nice thing about this is it allows students to develop um, the, the core course leading global teams. So you can imagine that you're in a team of five or six individuals and you could be in five or six different time zones. So as you're doing that consulting work, you're not only developing your team skills, but you're also learning how to manage a project when you're in different time zones. The other way that you can do the programs are these double degrees. So year one or year two, depending on the double degrees, we have 10 partner universities. I, I have a slide that I will show you where they're located. Majority of them are in Europe, but we do have um, a couple that are in Australia and then also Costa Rica. And so for year one, where it has Inkai, Bacconi, and Mannheim, those double degrees, we actually recruit for students to start at the partner university, and then your second year is with us. Um, and then the other uh, slide where it has year two with the, the remaining seven double degree partners, what would happen is you would be with us for one full year and then go to the partner university. I'll talk a little bit more about the doubles in a couple slides. This just gives you an idea of some of our partner universities on this slide. It's mainly um, some of our exchange destinations, but as I previously indicated, we do have over 60 partner universities that students can select from. It's not unusual for students if, let's say, it's an international student coming to Queen's and wanting to do the Masters of International Business program. It's not unusual for them to, to be with us for the fall and the winter semester and just doing a short-term exchange. So again, the beauty of the MIB program is that you really do get to tailor your experience to what you want it to be. So if it's the first time that you're in Canada and you don't, you don't want to miss a Canadian winter and be with us for the, the winter semester, there's definitely ways of doing that and then doing a short-term exchange as well. And People ask, what is a double degree? So why, why would I want to do two years of, of this program? And the nice thing about the double degrees is you're actually earning two separate degrees. So you're earning the Masters of International Business um, with Smith School of Business. And then you're also earning an MSc from a partner university. What that allows is allows individuals to expand their global network. So not only do you have an opportunity to expand your network, work while you're in the MIB program, but you also get to um, know the individuals who are studying at the partner university. It also opens up the alumni base and also the career advancement centers within Smith and then also at the partner universities. And as I indicated earlier in this presentation, we have had individuals who have done the double degrees let's say a Canadian um, student who was with us for the fall semester, they've gone on exchange in the winter semester. Um, there's one young individual that I'm thinking of. So he was with us for the fall. He ended up going to Brazil for the winter. And then he went to our partner university, ESSEC, which is in France and was able to participate in the at the France campus, but then also the Singapore campus. And so his story just allows him to to speak about how different his perspective was and his experience was within the MIB program. 
This slide gives you an idea of where our partners are located. As I indicated, a majority of our double degree partners are in um, in Europe, but we do have a partner in Australia and then our new partner in CHI, which is in Costa Rica. If you're looking at the double degree um, options, I would highly recommend when you're looking on our website to look at what the degree that you would be gaining from the partner university. Because this is again, where you get to um, diversify and change what your, your experience is going to be. So let's say that you're very much interested in uh, strategy and innovation and you're wanting to go into consulting. We would highly recommend going to um, Vienna University of Economics and Business because the specialization of the MSc that you would be doing would be in strategy and innovation. Um, or if you're interested in, in specializing in marketing, where well, we would have a couple partner universities that we would highly recommend, Bocconi being one of them or Asade being another. And so the double degree options just allows you to change your story a little bit um, so that you stand out in the crowd when it comes to looking for careers and such. And with that, um, this is this just gives you an idea of what companies are looking for. So this is why we think that there's so much value in the MIB program and the skills that you're gaining. Like I said, your classroom experience is where you get to have conversations and develop skills. And what employers are looking for, they're looking for individuals that, you know, that are strategic thinkers. They're looking for people that have had diverse experiences. Um, they're wanting to ensure that individuals are professional and they have communication skills. And so we find that within the MIB program, we're allowing students to develop those skills for when it's time for their careers. Within Smith, we do have our own career advancement center that has opened up to all students taking the MIB program. Uh, they do tailor their um, their training depending on how much work experience you've had. For a majority of our students, the average age of the class is 23. A lot of the students are coming out of their undergrad degrees right into the MIB program. However, there are times where we do have individuals that have had a few years of work experience. So depending on what your background is and what sort of work experience you've had will depend on where you're at in your career journey. So if you're, in, if you're going straight from your undergrad into the MIB program, then our Career Advancement Center um, advisors would talk to you at the discover phase, you know, learning about who you are, what are you hoping to accomplish? What kind of careers are you looking for when you're done the program? If you've already had some work experience, they might actually just take you right to the building stage of, of the journey, which is, you know, looking at your, your resume and making it so that you can target certain industries, certain jobs for when you're done. And as I said earlier in this in this presentation, for you to be successful, um, it's not only successful academically, but it is successful so that you're landing a job at the end of your MIB experience, whatever that might be. And then the launch part of the journey is launching into, into your careers or changing your careers and making little changes to, to your resumes and to, to your skills that you're building so that it allows you um, different opportunities within your career. The thing that we do at Smith a lot is a lot of personalized advising. So there's um, academic advisors such as myself. So as you're going through the program, we have conversations in regards to what you should be expecting out of the classroom experience, what you should be expecting within your exchange component. But then we also do the personalized experience and advising with it when it comes to the career aspect of the program. And then as well, there's personalized um, approach when it comes to the admission process. So we're definitely a, a hands-on, we like to have a personal touch with your whole experience going straight from admissions all the way through the academics and then into the careers. This slide gives you an idea of where some of our 
our grads are landing, um, you know, they're, they're landing jobs in consulting, they're landing jobs in the financial services, in technology. And again, because of the, the diversity of the classroom experience, as you can imagine, students aren't only just landing jobs in Canada, they're landing jobs around the world. Um, we stay connected to our alumni. So if there's ever a time that you're interested in learning about, you know, what is it like to live and work in Munich, Germany, we have connections um, all around the world that we're happy to, to provide to you so that you can hear what the experience has been like for a student um, in the program to now where they're landing in their careers. My apologies. Um, so not only do we do an incredible job when it comes to the classroom experience, the exchange co component of the program, we also provide a really good experience when it comes to events outside of the classroom. So we try and hold events where students get to enjoy the Canadian culture or the Kingston culture. Kingston is very much a student city. Um, we have three major uh, colleges and universities in Kingston. The population of our city usually goes up about 50,000 students in September. So we rely heavily on the student um, student body within Smith. And what we do, because there's so much diversity in the classroom, we hold a cultural night where we get to embrace and celebrate everybody's culture. We hold an international potluck where people get to bring food from, from their home and we just get to celebrate one another. We also do events like boat cruises. So Kingston is at the very beginning of the Thousand Islands. And so we try and take everybody out on a boat cruise during program launch so that students have the opportunity to see um, Kingston from the water, also experience the Thousand Islands. We've taken students on um, um, canoe trips. So just 20 minutes north of the city, we have these beautiful provincial parks. And so we try and get students outside of the city um, and being able to see the Canadian culture and Canadian uh, environment while they're going through the program. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we just do personal support. So any sort of health and wellness checks, any sort of academic advising, there's individuals that will be there to support you through your MIB experience. Even when you're at the partner universities, we still have times where we check in with students just to make sure that they're doing okay and allowing them to know that they're still part of the Smith community, even though they might be over in Germany or they might be in Switzerland on exchange. We also rely heavily on our Center for International Management colleagues. So they're the ones that manage all the partner relationships at the exchange level, but also at the double degree level. And then, as I indicated earlier, we have the Career Advancement Center. So we work very closely with the managers and the advisors within the Career Advancement Center. They start their, their programming as soon as day one of program launch starts. So you get to know them and you start building out what does your, your career path look like. And then as well, there's other ways to get involved. As I indicated, um, we need student exec members. We have ambassadors of the program. And so we rely heavily on the student experience and hearing from the students in regards to how they want their experiences to be shaped. And so how to stand out in the crowd, I'm going to pass this over to my colleague, Carrie Frazier, who is the application advisor. So she has all the answers in regards to what it takes to get admissions into the program. Okay, great. Thanks, Jen. So as Jen mentioned, my name is Carrie Fraser, and I'm the application advisor for the Master of International Business Program. So my role is to really work with all of our applicants throughout the application process and help them create a very strong application file to present to the admissions committee. So we are looking for candidates in this program who have strong communication and strong interpersonal skills. We really want candidates who have strong leadership skills and really have the ability to work as part of a team. As Jen mentioned, this is a very team-based program. So we really want those students who thrive working as part of a team-based environment. 
We're also looking for students who are really curious and excited about other cultures and really eager to work with individuals from other backgrounds. So not only do you get that international experience when you're on exchange, you also get a really international experience in the classroom here at Smith because we do have students from around the globe joining this program. So there are several components to the application process and I work with candidates to build the application file over time. I help guide them throughout the application process. So we do work on a rolling admissions basis. So there is no formal application deadline. Um, really important to note that we are still accepting domestic applications for the program that starts this fall. Um, so it starts at the end of August. So if you are at all interested in the program for our August start, I would certainly encourage you to submit your application as soon as possible and we can work throughout the application process quite quickly together. So as I receive pieces of the application file, I'm in touch with the candidate to ensure that they're aware of everything that I've received and ensure that they know what the next steps in the process are. Once the file is completed, we schedule an interview and the file is then reviewed by the admissions committee. And then candidates typically receive an admission decision within about 10 days or so of the interview. Uh, this time of year, admissions committee is meeting quite regularly and the turnaround time would be a little bit quicker on that just because we're on a bit of a strict timeline. Um, but it is important to note that we do offer a very personalized approach to the application process. And I work directly with all the applicants throughout the application process. So I spend a lot of time communicating with applicants by a phone, email, uh, Zoom calls, and you know, really get to understand the, or know the applicants and uh, um, work quite closely with them throughout the application process. So in terms of admission requirements, um, ideally we're looking for applicants who have completed an undergraduate degree in business or commerce, along with a core set of business courses. So if you've completed a degree, but not in business, you would be required to have intro to marketing, intro to finance, macroeconomics and finan financial accounting. Um, also, if you've not completed an undergrad degree in business, you would be required to submit a competitive GMAT or GRE score. If you do have an undergrad in business, but you haven't been able to maintain a, in the, a minimum of a B plus or a 3.3 GPA in the final two years of undergrad, you would also be required to submit a GMAT or GRE. So all of these requ admission requirements can be found on our website. And really important to note that work experience is not a requirement for this program. Uh, we typically see individuals coming into this program either immediately from the undergraduate degree or with no more than two years of work experience. So in terms of uh, the specific application process, the first step would be to complete the brief application form on our website. You can also submit your resume and transcript uh, on the website as well. In terms of your resume, important to include any travel or exchange opportunities you may have had, any intern experience, anything like that that really helps you stand out from other applicants and would ultimately help strengthen your application file. So once I've received an application, so the application form, uh, resume and transcript, I would conduct a preliminary assessment to determine eligibility for the program. And if you are suitable for the program, we would then move forward with the application process and we'd be collecting a few more pieces of the application package. So we would need to see your references. So basically this tells us about others' perception of you and how they feel you'd work in a team and how they feel that you would benefit from this program. So we need to see references. We'd also need to see your cover letter. And the cover letter is really your chance to introduce yourself to the admissions committee. So in the cover letter, you would be outlining the skills you bring to the program, why you're interested in this specific program, and how you hope to leverage this degree in your future career. Another element of the application process is a video essay. And this is done on an online platform. You're given three random questions. You have a short amount of time to prepare your answer, and then you respond on camera. So then I re receive and review those video responses. So all of those pieces together make up your application file. And like I said, my job is to really work closely with candidates throughout the application process to put together a very strong application file that's hopefully going to be reviewed favorably by the admissions committee. So if you are interested in applying to the program, again, you can simply do so by completing the application form on our website, submitting your resume and transcript. We do have a few spots remaining for our fall start this year, uh, for, um, and we are accepting applicants for domestic candidates. So if you are interested, I would encourage you to get in touch right away and uh, we can work together on the application process. So I hope to hear from you and back over to you, Jen. Thanks, Carrie. That is the final piece of our presentation. And now we're just gonna open it up to all of you in case you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat and we will answer them. I 
don't know if we've gotten any questions. So that means that Carrie and I have done our job well. <laughs> and we are hopefully able to answer all of them before all your questions before you even thought of them. So but thank you so very much for joining Carrie and I. We very much appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing your applications come in. Take care, everybody.